Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Pretty here. In today's video, I'll be showing you a preview of two of the videos that I have in one of my courses on my website. So the two videos that I have here are how to use session IDs in FlashSocket.io and also how to use FlashSocket.io to send private messages to other users in your app. So if you enjoy this video and you want to learn more about the course, you can go to the FlashExtensionsCourse.com or you can click on the link in the description below and it will take you to the same place. Also, if you want the code that's used in this video, I have a link in the description below as well, so you can click on that and download the code. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and like always, thank you for watching my videos. Next, I want to talk about session IDs. So session IDs are generated every time a client connects to one of your sockets. So in the example I have here in the script, I have two connections, so that means two session IDs are going to be generated. And session IDs are important because they allow you to send a message to a specific connection. So normally a connection is associated with a user. So for instance, if I were connected to a chat application, then my session ID would be sent to the server. Then if someone, if someone wanted to send a private message to me, then the server will have to know my session ID and then they can send a private message to me by using that session ID. So the other user wouldn't know my session ID, but the server would have a way of figuring out my session ID. So a message can be sent to that one user. So to use the session IDs, I'm going to import requests from Flask. So what Flask socket IO does is it adds things to the request object and one of those things is the session id so as an example here i'm going to print the session id from the request object so request.sid that's what we're looking for and then i'm going to send a message so test and i need to refresh this and maybe even start my server again i turned it off all right so i'm going to start my server again and then refresh. So what I want to do is I'll send tests. So I see the pop-up there so everything works correctly. And here I have this string and this string is the session ID for that particular connection. So if I were to refresh this page and do it again, I would get a different session ID because it connected again. So the server will need to figure out how to handle users and sessions, like how to map them together. But in this example, I'm just going to show you the simple case. When you add an authentication system or a login system on top of this, then you'll have a way to map session IDs to user IDs. But for now, I'll just deal with the session IDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the user send their preferred name. And with their preferred name, I'm going to store it into a Python dictionary and along with the name, I'm going to store the session ID that they currently have. So that way I'll have a list of all the session IDs and users that are connected to the server at a given time. So to do this, what I'll do is when the message comes in from the user, so I'll use the same socket here. Actually, no, how about this? To make it a little better and more clear, I'll use a dedicated one. So socket IO on, and then I will say username is going to be the event. And the namespace is going to be, let's call this private. So it's going to be used for a private messaging functionality. So I'm going to create the function, receive username. And then I can just have username be the parameter name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a global list of users. So I'll call it this users. And inside of this global list, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append to this list. So users.append, and I'm going to append a dictionary. The key is going to be the username, and the value is going to be the session ID. So request.sessionID. And then what I'll do is I'll simply print the list right after I append. So I'm not going to send anything back to the user because I'm not concerned with that at the moment, but this is just to demonstrate how these users can be associated with request session IDs. All right. So in the index, what I'll do is I will add another field. So I'll call this username and I don't need a type for the button. I'll just call this send username. And then 
in the script, what I'll do is I'm going to use the, how about a new namespace just to make it even more clear. So I'll define the namespace down here. So I'll call this private socket IO, and then I'll pass in the server first followed by a namespace. So the namespace is going to be slash private. So I need to add that and I already have it here. So what I'm going to do now is on click of send username, I'm going to send that username to the server. So private socket, emit, and then what's the name of the event username? I'm going to emit the username and the username will simply be the value of username dot val. And then finally, I should be able to test this out. So I will refresh here and my username will be Anthony. So let me send the username and then let's see. It didn't work. So let me just make sure the script was updated because that has been a problem so far. So looking at it, yeah, there's no private socket here. So I know the script didn't update. So let me refresh this again and let's take a look at the source script. Okay, I see the private socket now. So let me go ahead and try sending my username again. So send Anthony. And here I have my list being printed out. So Anthony, and then I have this number that follows. So now if I go here, and this is still the old version, so let me refresh that. And I'll send another username. So this is the second tab. And the username for this one will be pretty printed. So I'll send a username and let's see what happens on the server. So now I have two objects in my users list. So I have Anthony, I have pretty printed. And then in the third one, I will do the exact same thing. So I'll send flask as the username send. And now I have three objects in my session list. So each user has their own session ID. And through this session ID, I'll be able to send messages to other users. Okay, so now that I have the session IDs, to actually send messages to specific users, I need to modify some things, of course. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add inputs taking a username and a message to send to that username. So let's say send to, it's going to be an input, type text, and then let's call the ID send to username. And then the message is going to be another input text and let the ID be private message. And finally, I'll have a button the ID will be send private message. And then I'll just have a send. Okay. So if I do that and I refresh, I should see it. Okay. Let me put it on a different line just to make it a little more clear. So this one won't have any validation. It's just a simple example, but you'll see how everything works here. Okay, so I have it on the second line. And now what I need to do is I need to update this receive username because I don't wanna use a list of dictionaries. I just want to use a dictionary. So a list of dictionaries is easier to see when I print, but an actual dictionary is easier to work with for now at least. So what I'll do is I'll comment this out and I'm going to just add a key to the users table and the key will be the username that the user gives. So that username is the username of the user who is going to send a message to some other username. And then when I'm going to send that message to someone, it's going to look in his user's dictionary and get the username to the recipient and then send to that recipient. So I really don't need to put anything here. I can put, um, something like username added just to verify that the username has in fact been added to the user's dictionary that I just updated to be a dictionary. 
All right, so now what I need to do is just fill out the script part. So what I want to do is below this, I'm still going to use the same namespace. So this is still going to be on the private namespace. So it's going to be a little separate from these two namespaces that I created. And what I want to do is I want to check for a click event on the button that I created for send private message. So that's the ID name. I need the hash. And I'll say on a click of this button, I want to execute the following function. And that function is going to first get the username. So let's say recipient is going to be equal to, and then the ID is the send to username. So dot val. And then the message to send, I'll name it that, is going to be equal to the value of private message. And then I need to send this. So private socket dot emit, and I'm going to send a JSON object. So I'll fill out the event in just a moment because I haven't actually created it, but I'm going to send a JSON object with a username. So it's going to be recipient and a message. And the message is going to be message to send. Okay, so now what I need to do is create an event. And this event will be, let's call this event private message. So it's going to emit private underscore message to Flask. So I need to handle that in Flask. So socket IO on private underscore message. The namespace will continue to be private. And then I'll just call this private message. And let's use payload. So the payload is going to be that JSON object that's being sent. So the username and the message. So now what I want to do is I want to first get the session ID for the user that I'm sending to. So let's see, recipient, recipient, P int session ID is going to be equal to the user's table. So remember users or the user's dictionary. And then the key is going to be payload. And I'm looking for the username value in the payload. So it just corresponds to this username that I have here in the JSON object because the JSON object is this payload. And then message and I spelled recipient wrong recipient. I spelled it right over here. I forgot how to spell. I think that's it. It looks weird now that I'm thinking about it, but I'll just leave it like that. So the message will be users or excuse me, the payload and the payload is the message. So that gives me the two things that I need to send. And now what I want to do is I want to emit a message. So emit, and then I'm going to put some events, which I'll specify in a moment. And the message is going to be message. So the message is the second argument. The first argument is the event. The second argument is the message. And now I need to send that message to the particular session ID. And the way I do that is by using a room. So all the users are put into a room by default when they join a connection. So the, the room is going to be their session ID. You can use rooms for other things, which I'll cover soon. But for now, just know a room is a collection of users. And in this case, each user has their own room. So they're going to be in the room alone. And then later, I'll show you how to create other rooms where you can have more than one user in a room. So the room is going to be the recipient ID, the recipient session ID. And then the event is going to be, let's say, new private message. All right, so now I need to handle this event on the JavaScript side. So private socket, because this is coming from the private namespace, remember that it uses the same namespace that the listener has when you are emitting from that function. So I don't have to specify private here because it picks up the private from here. If I wanted a different namespace, then I have to specify directly. So private socket on, 
And then the event is going to be new private message, which I spelled wrong. So new private message. And a callback function. So remember, it's just the same style as these here. And of course, it takes in a message. So what I'm going to alert is the message. Okay, so that should be it to get it to work. So now I just have to make sure everything refreshes correctly. So I'll refresh all three of my examples and I'll make sure that the JavaScript source has been updated. So in this case, see on new private message, that's correct. And then let me just make sure the second one is updated as well. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to send a username for each one. So for this window, this first tab, my username is going to be Anthony. So I'll send and it should say username added, which it does here. And then on this one, the username will be pretty printed. So I'll send and username has been added again. And finally on this one, the username will be Python. So I'll send and it tells me the username has been added. So I should have three usernames in that user's dictionary and each username corresponds to a session ID. So now if I want to send a message from one user to another, I'll just first type in the username that I'm interested in. So let's try pretty printed because I just created this one. And remember there's no validation here. So if I put a username that doesn't exist, it's going to mess up, but that's not too important because I just want to show you the socket IO functionality. So I'm going to send a message to pretty printed and pretty printed is on the second tab. So if I put a message here, hello, pretty printed, this is Anthony. So if I send here, I expect to see an alert pop up here with the message that I'm sending because I'm sending to the pretty printed user and it's only active on this tab. So I should get nothing on this tab because this is for Python. So let's see if that works. Send. Then I look at the second tab and I see the message. So it says, hello, pretty printed. This is Anthony. So I just sent a private message from pretty printed or from Anthony to pretty printed. And you'll see that on the Python tab, nothing happened because I'm not talking to Python. I'm only talking to pretty printed. So if I send a message from Python to Anthony, so I'll say, Hey, Anthony, same thing should happen. So send. Then I look at the first tab. I have a message, but for the second tab for pretty printed, nothing has happened. And likewise, I can send a message to Python. I say, Hey, Python, this is pretty printed. I'll send and I should see an alert pop up on this tab. And that's exactly what I see because I'm only sending a message to this session ID. So as you can see, this is pretty powerful because it allows me to send a message to any user who is currently connected to the server using Flashsocket IO. So how you organize the sessions can get a little tricky, but in this case, it's just a user's dictionary in memory. Of course, as your app grows, you may have to do things differently. Like for example, if you have an app that is pretty big, then you'll probably use something like Reddit, Red is to have an in-memory database that's separate from your app so you can keep track of these usernames and session IDs. And then also you'll probably have something where you can map usernames to sessions. So if someone is logged in, you don't want them to be able to open up a new tab and then have a different username. You want everything to be associated with the same username. So that's another thing that you'll have to do, but I'll show you some of those things a little later in the examples for the apps that I'm going to build. So that's pretty much it. That's how you send a message to a specific user. And since I introduced room, I'll talk a little bit more about it next.